Um, all right, so Laura, tell us, where are we right now? We are at the Audible Minetta Lane Theater. I think and, that's what it's called now. And what's what are you prepping for? Give us a little insight. I wrote a show called Laura Benanti, Nobody Cares. <laughs> and it is a comedy show with some original music that I wrote with Todd Almond. And it's sort of um, stories about my life. And it's a love letter to... Um, ingenues and recovering ingenues and moms and anybody working on themselves and I'm really excited about it. So when you started the process of writing the show Mm -hmm. because I know I think Audible came to you and asked about doing a show were you like where do I start like where did the process begin? No because I do concerts all over the country and one of the things that makes me the most proud is when a husband who's been dragged there comes up to me afterwards and is like you're so funny I I would watch you just talk. which I'm a little offended too, where I'm like, you didn't like the singing? (laughs) Um, And so I thought, well, let me do something that's more like that. Because A, it is actually my favorite part of my concerts, the talking to the audience and making them laugh. So I am no stranger to telling funny stories. Um, What was different is sitting down and writing an actual script for myself. And so now when I'm like, I got to memorize this, people are like, yeah, but you wrote it. But I want to, as I am respectful to all playwrights I want to respect myself and say the words that I wrote you know instead of sort of like fumbling through some uh, stories so you mentioned that there are some music here in the show which you did with Todd Allman where did that um, partnership uh, come when did that how did that start Todd and I met 20 years ago when Ted Sperling the great uh, music director and conductor was like I think you two would really like each other and we hit it off and I did a few of his workshops of his beautiful pieces and he's my music director. And so, you know, I've always written sort of comedic songs, um, but never really did anything with them. And I feel really good about them. I feel like the work we've done together is really, I'm, I'm really proud of it. Yeah, I love that. Um, so with these stories that you're telling, what are you hoping like audiences who, m- do know Laura Benanti, the Broadway star coming to see. What are you hoping that they maybe learn um, or might surprise them? Um, You know, I'm kind of an open book. So if anyone's ever seen an interview with me, they know that. But I do think that the majority of people, you know, either see me as a Broadway actress. I've done a lot of serious stuff, but also a lot of comedy or Melania Trump. So I think to tell personal stories from sort of from my childhood through all the way through to being 44 years old, um, which is what I am now. My agents are going to be furious that I, that I said that. <laughs> Tell Hollywood I'm 30 still. Um, so I am excited for them to see a more personal version of me. And also, you know, getting to be a 44-year-old woman, I am now in a space where I just um, care a lot less about what people think of me. Mm-hmm. And I think that is a a nice message to send to other um, women who are currently experiencing that and also young women who are still in that prescriptive place of like, you got to be a nice girl and you got to make people happy and you have to smile and because you don't. Yeah. The best part, what I love about Audible is that like, while there are short runs, they get to live on on Audible. um, So when you were creating this, knowing that it was going to then live not visually, but just audibly, did that come into play when you're like writing your script and writing this? A hundred percent. It's a song in my show called Give It To Me. And I sing it to the audience at home. And it's like a very sexy song, but it's Give It To Me, Give Me Your Attention. Um, Because, you know, this platform is not intended for live visual performance. So people at home can listen wherever they want, whenever they want, for however long they want. And so what I'm encouraging them to do is listen to it all the way through because it's a theater piece. You know, it's not a podcast. And that's so exciting because, I mean, obviously with Playbill, we have so many followers that are not just here in New York, in an area, and then they get to be a part of the experience then learn more about you through this um, being able to listen to Audible. Yeah, I mean, what I love about theater is that it is ephemeral. So there is the excitement of knowing you were in that audience at that particular time. There's a beauty to that. But also that's the um, sad thing about theater where you didn't get to be there and experience it. Um, So I'm really excited for people all over the country and or world to be able to hear this. 